Disney Plus and Marvel Studios gives us a Halloween treat with Werewolf by Night. Are we howling at the moon over it or taking the silver bullet? <laughs> Stay with us and find out. Get ready for the 3324 Podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Kuber share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to this special 3324 Podcast Halloween edition of the special release by Disney Plus of mm -hmm. Werewolf by Night, which is a kind of a one-off, uh, 55 minute kind of Halloween treat. Uh, right, Eric? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a neat thing. It's, it's something different from Marvel. It was, um, I first, I didn't know what to make of it. The first time I saw it, watched it twice. Um, but the second time I totally dove in and appreciated what they were trying to do there. And I, I really nice little call back to the whole, like, 70s special presentation for television yep. thing the With new the logo beginning. yeah first thing for marvel that's yep. uh, hopefully there'll be more of that uh, yeah so some really height, some so. yeah some uh, some yeah. interesting and different things that marvel is trying so yeah. before we get into that of course we got to do the stats there are some just a few little stats there's some tiny ones it's small, already it's small stuff a little bit <laughs> yeah uh just the uh, basic stuff uh released this was released on october 7th on disney plus so we're a couple of weeks in so we're gonna go spoilers Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't like fresh out of the gate. So hopefully you've had a chance to watch it. Uh, and there's not like a total, it's not like a spoilery type thing anyway. Uh, directed by Michael Giacchino. And yes, that's, yeah. that is how you pronounce his last name. Because I watched Giacchino. a video of him saying, I'm Michael Giacchino. <laughs> Giacchino. Because <laughs> I was going to say Giacchino, Giacchino. Yeah, I always said Giacchino. Giacchino. Yeah. <laughs> it's Michael Giacchino. He, uh, yeah. So he directed it. And uh, normally you hear him under music by Michael Giacchino. Yeah, he's a very prolific composer of television. Uh, in, in the yep. MC, MCU TV, he did the mm -hmm. score for the Batman with Robert Pattinson. So mm -hmm. uh, he's dipping his toe into uh, into into directing. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Yep. Uh, the cast: uh, Gail Garcia Bernal as Jack Russell. <laughs> now, Jack Russell is a breed of dog. Yeah, uh, I you know what I I picked up on. I'm like, really, this is the character's name. Jack that is really the character's name in the comics as well. <laughs> yeah. There's two werewolves yeah. by night. There's two different yeah. ones, but Jack mm -hmm. Russell. Uh, you've got Laura Donnelly as Elsa Bloodstone, mm -hmm. uh, and Harriet Sansom Harris as Verusa Bloodstone, who is the stepmother of Elsa Bloodstone. And then I just want to me make mention of Carrie Jones, um, who has made an appearance, a mention in our Book of Boba Fett series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he played Chrysanthemum. Uh, yeah. the, the my massively large Wookiee with a with a temper to match in uh, in Book of Boba Fett. Uh, he is the, he is he does the practical portion of the man thing, mm -hmm. um, which was a surprise and delight uh, to see. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. In, in this uh, in this special, yeah. it's kind of like you said in the beginning that it opens. It's got it, it's it's kind of a, a throwback to those CBS special event. The, you know, the spinning logo. So it really throws you kind of back to almost something that you're watching on TV back in the seventies, but was filmed like an old film, right? It's, it's, they're already kind of setting, yeah, setting so the good. table for something different. You know, now we've talked just to get this out of the way, we've talked about Marvel fatigue and we're going to kind of put that. It's time to kind of put that into the past. You know, mm -hmm. people I think at this point are going to decide or not feel we used to feel we have to watch every Marvel show that comes out or every Star Wars com show that comes out. I have to watch it because they're putting it out, right? Right. And that's what you kind of get tired or I don't like this. So I think we're kind of past the point of, okay, I'm just going to watch the things I that I want to watch. The things that sound seem interesting, I'm going to watch. And the things that's that true. aren't, yeah. I'm just going to mm -hmm. pass over it. You know, we, we're not obligated to it, but we kind of felt that way, um, which led to it. So now I think we're at the point where – these different uh, properties come out and we can decide whether or not we want to we want to watch them. Well, much like the comic books, too. I mean, yeah. we didn't wait. I didn't read every, yeah, every yeah, hero, read every, every comic. One. And it's, exactly. they're, they're actually tackling uh, a lot of different demographics. So like Ms. Marvel, I'm not a teenage girl. So, no, I mean, I watched a few episodes. I think it's good. I think it's good for what it is, but it's targeting that kind of demographic. So it, it does. I don't have to like it. You know what I mean? So I don't have to be. Yeah, praising every little thing they do because it's it's not targeting me, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, not, we can pick and, and choose. I, right, and I'm not an Egyptian god, and I right. don't care for moonlight. Moonlight, so uh, yeah, 
There it is. I, I liked Ms. Marvel. Go figure. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, so th- this this is a total uh, – it's it's a self – and here's the thing also, which, which is a question I want maybe for you to answer at the end. Okay. Um, this is something new for Marvel. This is a one-off, 55 minutes, so it's less than an hour. So it's a film. It's a short film or an expanded expanded short film, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end, I want, want you to give me your opinion if you think this is something viable as opposed to, or you could tell me now, uh, is this something viable as opposed to every character has to have a series? You know, we have to do a Hawkeye series. We have to do, Ms. Mar- you know, all these ones. Everyone's got to have a series. Or is this a much uh, concise or or better way for certain characters to tell a story? With, with a one-off, because this is like a one. This is like a, a like if you're going to relate it to comics. Yeah. Uh, mo- most co- most uh, characters that had their own series or runs would have it would have an annual like an annual, which would be a double sized issue, or they would have a right. giant yeah. sized big issue, and that's kind of what this is. This is kind of like a like a, a giant sized issue of a comic, you know. And do you think that this is something that they should explore more as opposed to feeling like, hey, everyone's got to have a series. I think so. Um, you know, I, I'm, of course, I'm, you know, I've been a little bit more critical in recent, you know, because I was really, I really dove into the first 10 years of Marvel and the promise of something greater coming along, these characters getting together. They're moving away from that, it seems. I mean, they are doing a lot more one off kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I would like to see more of this happen. But it's much like the comic books, right? You read it, you put it away, you know, maybe yeah. you'll revisit it down the road at some point. But it's nice to have these little short little things. And sometimes, yeah, maybe that it, it's kind of uh, fresh air in the corridors, you know, to have yeah. just one thing, one, you know, and not have to worry about all of the the sort of stretching uh, the mental where they're at mentally and all that kind of thing. Yeah, it is very much, you know, back in the old school way of, of storytelling. And, and yeah. it, it is kind of refreshing. I, I, I can, I can see my, yeah, yeah, I can see myself watch rewatching this yeah. as opposed to rewatching a whole season of. Captain America Winter Soldier or whatever it is, you know, like, like I agree. You know, I, I, agree. I, I can see myself saying, Oh yeah, let me, let me throw on werewolf by night. Cause it's quick. Yeah. It gets you the story. It's, it's, right. it, it move. you know, it's, you know, you need, it's, it's a different, it's a different beast to, mm-hmm. to do a werewolf pun. It's a different piece. It's a different <laughs> beast because when you have a series, you know, you're stretching out, you're developing characters and Michael Giacchino's take on this on werewolf by night was more akin to a twilight zone episode. Right, you would watch the Twilight Zone every week, and it would be different characters. You didn't get the origin of each character. You were thrown into right. whatever was happening in their life at this particular point, from you know when the weirdness would start. Right, so you didn't get yeah. an origin story, how many kids they had, this, that, and the other thing. And Jaquino's take on on Werewolf by Night was this is just a slice out of this person's life, and and th- we're just watching this. And uh, uh, the same way as if you picked up uh, issue thirty six. Mm-hmm. Of Werewolf by Night, right? And this happened to be the story, right? Like you just picked up a random, a, a random issue, yeah. Um, which I kind yeah. of like, also, right? We don't have; they didn't have to spend all this time on this, that, and the other thing, and explain. It's kind of like here it is. You'll pick up on it, you know. Mm-hmm. Which, which again is just another way of, you know, dis, di, kind of doing away with the origin stories. You know, all the well, all it's, the, it's ser- all the series have those origin stories. It's everything you need to know about this particular of these characters in this particular situation and you know you don't have to go we don't yeah we don't need we don't need to know well we see this in a lot of and you know this the disappearance of the two-hour film too i mean that's this is you know things like raiders of the lost ark where everything you need to know about that character all those characters are there yeah you'll learn learn it eventually you learn it and and yeah so if there is a backstory or anything, it's it's told in a few lines, and and that's and that's the creative part of it is is somebody who could condense that down, and 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 basically flesh it out just in a few lines of dialogue, and and that's you know that's all yeah. you need to know. And yeah. part of it is, is through the character, you know, like right. let's let's start from the beginning. I mean, this movie just starts off as classic. It's got a it's got a couple of it's got a lot of different DNA in there. There's it's got the Universal monsters. It's got some of the Hammer. Yeah, films, yeah, and it's got some of the Corman. Oh, Roger, it's got oh some yeah, Roger Corman stuff, especially <laughs> Ulysses Bloodstone. Though you know, but but what, the way this movie starts out, it it had me, it it yeah. had me at hello. 
Okay. Just, just from yeah. the black and white, the, the the brooding score, that classic score that you would hear, in the, you know, the, you know, like yeah, that kind of a thing. The soft focus of the black and white, so it's not this sharp, four K, see every detail. Right. It was kind yeah. of a little, not not like blurry, but a little softer focus. So. They even you know, threw in. They even threw in like the little like cracks and lines yeah. in like an old film, like the, cig- yeah, they, the cigarette burn when you when you're yeah. gonna change change yeah. reels. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, you know, but it's not retro for retro sake because it doesn't take place back then. It's just this story has that that it's gothic smooth. feel to it, and that and, yes. and what it's, exactly it's the, it's these the characters smooth. need. Werewolf by Night is a gothic character, like kind of like you know, dra- you know, they also you know, Marvel had Tomb of Dracula, so there was that monster side of things that that Marvel had, and Blade, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really dug the aesthetic. I was already like, okay, you've got you've got my attention. I, I'm I'm here with you, right? You know, and and then just the way it starts out, it starts out more like a Hammer film for some. I've kind of felt that you know the meeting of these people and you know the the monster yeah. hunters and and the 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 main monster hunter Ulysses Bloodstone is dead mm-hmm. um and and then the 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 butler goes over like puts a crank into the coffin opens it up and the coffin opens it's got like a pre-recorded like he's being manipulated like a puppet with a pre-recorded thing like welcoming everybody yeah, it's almost like this mechanical thing you find <laughs> in an amusement park. That was a really nice touch. I really, yeah, I really dead body, that. This dead body. It was just so yeah. cre- It was just so it's creepy and, and it's effective. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. real. It's it's right on set and it's 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 mechanical, but yet it's it, it adds to the 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 mood of the whole thing. So yeah, it's, you know, it's really yeah, good. And 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 in addition to the to the black and white and throwback aesthetic, they they really did downplay the use of cgi there is some cgi but it's not all over the place it's it's yeah. pra- you know practical when they could do it practical down to werewolf by night's makeup was mm-hmm. you know a la lon cheney a la werewolf of london yeah you know doing yeah. practical makeup do you know whenever they can uh man thing he he's a combination of practical animatronic and cgi um because he's just too he's too good to not like you have to i think you gotta you've got to get him right and like the 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 practical stuff works really well. Like I, th- I think oh, at so. the end, I think at the very end, he's all practical. Yeah, what, the, the like close-up shots for sitting. sure. For, for for sure, like the, you know the hulking. You need that size. You need that yeah. scale. You know, especially when the arm comes out and it grabs him. You know, you know that will probably wouldn't have played as well. But yeah, when you see him long shots when he's running and and he's you know doing all these this and when, physical he, and when he does what the man thing does to people, right? Um, exactly. <laughs> which is, and yeah. is, man thing is a great character. And I, I always like the man thing, and he's a really he's not even a C level. He's like a D level character. I mean, he mm-hmm. was you know kind of kind of one of those again one of those gothic characters that was always in in the background. Usually, I mean, he had his own run, but he'd be in Marvel team ups, and that's what this this movie is kind of like. It's like an ep- an issue of Marvel team up because apparently Werewolf by Night and Man Thing are kind of like pals. Like they they kind of <laughs> they, there's an ongoing dispute about who actually ends up sa- like who keeps having to save the other. Yeah, you know, Jack, like buddy, Jack buddy cop, thinks that he I seems to be that. always having to save Man Thing from stuff, but then Man Thing in the end thinks that he saved Jack from from the predicament he was in this time. So uh, I like the the light hearted touch. But it doesn't get in the way of the gruesomeness of of the other parts of the film. So, you mm-hmm. know, basically, in a nutshell, since Ulysses Bloodstone died, there's actually a stone called the Bloodstone, which helps people mortals fight monsters. Yeah, it's able to detect who, like who is a monster and, and has certain powers that that can do that. So, there's a gathering of hunters at Ulysses Bloodstone's, you know, upon his death to say to to hunt a monster and whoever kills the monster will get the bloodstone and then can carry on the lineage and, and Ulysses bloodstones, uh, a strange daughter, Elsa shows up, uh, much to the chagrin of her stepmother, who is Verusa, who's really kind of that weird. Mm-hmm. She remind she kind of reminded me of, uh, of Alan Rickman in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, like with the, with the masks and the hoods. And it's like, join yeah. us or yeah. die, you know? And the actress, but, is, she's just one of those, she's BB Glazer on Frasier. If you don't, if you okay. don't know the actress, she, <laughs> she plays this real, she plays his agents, real eccentric type of roles that she's, she, I think she did an episode of uh, X-Files as well, where she was like that, that intensity, that real, like, uh-huh. like the grin and uh-huh. everything. Yeah. So she, she was really good in this, really good. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so the, 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 the theory is, you know, uh, we we have this monster out in this, this penned in area. It's almost like a little town of type of, of a series of buildings and, and corridors. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kill the monster, you get the blood, you know, we, we're going to, we're going to attach the bloodstone to the monster. It'll weaken him. Uh, but it'll also make him angry. So it's going to be a challenge. And, uh, you know, through a series of a series of circumstances, Jack and, and, uh, and Elsa kind of get, end up together and kind of uh, kind of agreeing very tentatively to work together because Jack is actually not there for the bloodstone. He's yeah. actually there to release his friend, the man thing who got captured. He's there. Right. So he's there for the quote unquote for the monster. And you can kind of <laughs> tell in the beginning there, there are some tells of all these other monster hunters that are there. They're, they are these burly guys. They have weapons and specialties. And Jack is like this small, like skinny guy with like a suit on. You know, mm-hmm. in the beginning, I'm kind of like, yeah, he doesn't seem like he's a monster hunter, but we kind of knew he was a werewolf. But um, yeah, it was kind of interesting that his his objective was to get to get the man thing freed, so that you know, because they are friends yeah. and they kind of yeah, like, you, so you, kind of like you, traveling pals. They 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 kind of fool you into thinking that the man thing is the is like this monster that that's unlike anything they've ever faced, and it's you know, it's cool that he was more or less the red herring uh, when when the real monster of the piece is, you know, turns out to be Jack, you know, like he, you know, when he, when he turns into the werewolf and uh, that, you know, the hunter becomes the hunted, you know, and that's, yeah. uh, I love that twist. That, so that was really interesting. And then it, this cast of characters too, it was so great. Uh, I want to make that note of these really interesting looking people like these hunters and they yeah. were really cool looking all the and let's give props to all the masks and you know the creatures yeah, on the, the, you know, the, the, the the heads, the heads on the walls and everything oh, really yeah. really good practical like you know they actually went ahead and made the masks yeah. and old school stuff you know, that old you would school see. stuff yeah it's so cool yeah, yeah really, really cool. just really neat yeah. um and and the thing about the man thing is is in the comics the the tagline like you've got daredevil the man without fear you know yeah the incredible hulk the mighty thor the, the, the tagline of the man thing was always um, whatever knows fear burns mm-hmm. at the touch of the man thing. So the man thing doesn't actually have any inherent powers. It's if you're afraid of him, his touch will burn you and, and, and you know, you'll disintegrate you almost like acid. But if you're not afraid, he's not a threat. Yeah. You know? So I, great, and if you don't know that, idea. you don't understand yeah. what his power is. So um, it was really great when, when he, kind of grab somebody who was you know because and when when elsa <laughs> when when elsa and jack kind of come to their alliance and 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 his thing is look listen i just want to release the mon you know the monster you can have the bloodstone i don't really care about it mm-hmm. you know and and that's when jack says because uh the man thing's actual name is ted salas he was actually working on he was a victim of the super soldier serum program where he was injected with that and then fell into a swamp became the man thing mm. um he said to her like just when you see him, just pretend he's an old, treat him like an old friend, you know, and call and call him by his name. She's like, what's his name? He's like, Ted, Ted, <laughs> you know, and, and it sounds so weird. It sounds so strange, but if you know the comic, it, it, yeah. kind of, it, it really did such a, and he looks so great in black and white. Like he was he meant to be a universal monster. Like he looked like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it was just put, like, he looked so great in black and white that it was just, he had that 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 feel to him like he was uh-huh. he was a a, mo- a monster at like he belonged in the 40s like like yeah it's a step above what they did back then but then you consider yeah. you know a creature from the black lagoon was such a cool iconic look yeah. but yeah this thing is yeah he, he, feels he does fit like he right belong, in. like he belongs yeah. there you know yeah um and his effect is really cool when he grabs the that I don't know if he was Irish or Norse or whatever that guy. And <laughs> as soon as he touches him, the guy, you know, the, the, just, the, the guy just melts. You Let know, me ask like you clothes. this. Now yeah. you bring him up. Did you think that that was uh, Kurt Russell when you no. first saw him? I thought it was Kurt Russell really? for sure. I thought, but it turns out to be the guy from Star Trek four. <laughs> he's the guy that the, the, the punk on the bus. Oh, really? He's playing the music. His, his name is Kirk. Um, <laughs> Kirk. Uh, Oh my god, my goodness! I can't remember his last name, but he, yeah, he's the punk he's, on the bus that Spock gives the pinch to, and, and he, he gives the pinch to. Yeah, he's like, "Screw you!" Like you know, <laughs> yeah, he's that guy. I thought, it, I, but I thought for sure it was Kurt Russell. Wow, I really did. I thought, I thought they the guy in the beginning. Up. I thought the narrator yeah. was Clancy Brown, and it's not. Yes, it sounded like I did too. Oh, they got Clancy Brown, and I looked it up. Yeah. Like no, I'm like this guy sounds no. exactly like him. 
which begs the question, like a lot of stuff you think is Clancy may not be. Maybe Wait, this, this guy. It's probably this guy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah, bring up so. his name, so he's going to be known as this guy for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> not the not no. the unclancy brown here. no he's yeah that's it that's all you need um, to know <laughs> yeah th this has so many different it's, it's got like it's got horror elements it's got occult elements it's got yeah. you know some sci-fi elements with with how the man thing is and um his effect you know i'm glad it was in black and white because it's just like the person glows like white when he grabs him and you just start to see like the melting right um yeah. it wasn't graphic it was it was done just the, the right way like just how he just like like you you felt like his giant hands like the the you know when he grabs somebody and then it just mm -hmm. like starts screaming and they're like ah and they just like melt away um <laughs> yeah really neat you know and again how they dealt with jack um you know obviously things go awry and, and jack gets captured and they figure out that he's a monster because he touches the bloodstone and, and can't grab it which is you know a sign that yeah he's that's not, the tell not quite yeah. not quite human part human but not right. all human and yeah. and it's it was a great line from uh, from Verus is like like let's see what kind of monster you are, yeah. Right? So like they she's like, you know, we, poke, you know she was yeah. she was intrigued like, oh, you're a monster. Let's see exactly what you you know what what are you are you a yeah. bat are you a this are you a that you know, um. So they cage him and and it was it was very it was very well done, um, because they just kind of build it up, mm -hmm. you know. And even that transformation sequence was it, with the shadows that was done that was done on set. It looks kind of like it's animated, but it was actually done on set with, I, th I believe, with different people, like kind of stepping in in different transformation. Uh, That's cool. Things yeah. to show, you know, like and they would kind of be switching out. Um, and all you see is is the face of, of Elsa during the transformation and it kind of like zooming in on her. With you such know, that horror. Whole, that whole, yeah, the less is more aesthetic of we don't because see we don't need to see a detailed change, you know. Again, back back in in those days, it was more about the reaction of the horror that that someone was portraying. Yeah, it it was uh, you know because up to this point, Elsa is this sort of like you know, un you know, unflinching like strong badass, you know, very, sort of <laughs> badass kind of a firebrand. Like she comes in and she's just obviously she's got history with this family that you know like she's you know, but she's been on her own and you know I almost got the impression that she was almost like. Uh, I, I like the little touches of Black Widow mm -hmm. that they gave her, like the the moves, yeah, like the fighting, like, yep. the fighting, like the same thing. I thought maybe that she was actually part of that program the that they were going to write be. that in, that she was actually a Black Widow at one point, but uh, you know, didn't need to go there. But it, I think the visual cues are yeah. are enough. But to see that horror on her face when he's when he's transforming, and you realize that he, you know. Maybe it's because because they were working together and that, you know, to see him transforming into this creature uh, was too much she could take. So she was that that was like, you know, so it was really he's a really small. He's a really small, nondescript guy. Yeah. Like, you know, like, although he does have like he's wearing some face paint and they're kind of like, why? Like, yeah, in the beginning one of the like that the big guy says, why? You know, why? What's you know, I, oh, I like that. And he goes, well, it's an honor. My ancestors. And he's like, well, I don't, I don't go in for that kind of stuff. I'm just into kill. You know, like. <laughs> But I, but I like it, you know. It, 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 cool, it, you know. it gives it that sort of tribal. Yeah, uh, yeah. You kind of you, you and, see yeah, that he, he almost looks like his eyes are sunken. Like kind of give him some yep. dark circles. Mm -hmm. Like maybe he hasn't slept or something. Again, just using the practical, like the old, the good old filmmaking techniques. You know, of mm -hmm. not relying on on let's do it digitally. We can we can de age or we can do this or that. It's like no, let's just kind of make this film. You know, to do it any other way would have been uh, would have probably it. would have cheapened it. You're right because he doesn't look anything like he does in the comic. The comic he's like a full on hulking gray wolf, like the, with yeah. the long face. But obviously, if they had done that, it would have been like maybe close up. You know, time with like, like you, you know, call back to like American Werewolf yeah. or the Howling or something like that, and that would would have taken away from the the really old school mm -hmm. Hammer, uh, you know, Universal Monsters effect that that he was trying to go for. So I'm glad that they scaled it back. At first, you know, the first time I saw him, I was a little, you know, as I, I, you know, in all honesty, I was a little disappointed. But mm -hmm. then on the other hand, I was like, you know what? No, this is cool. Yeah, because he's like really in the moment and he's doing all these things himself, and it's like, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, it was yeah, it was so pretty neat. It was, better, he just, it was a better choice. Yep. Yeah, I, I think so. I think for this it was right. In in some mm -hmm. cases, you want it. You need to see things. You need to be shown. But for this character, he's firmly planted in in that era, that gothic yeah. era. So it was more about the horror. Yeah. And not about what we're seeing. 
and being shown because it wouldn't have been as horrific. You know, That's been, right. You it's, know, it been like okay, the, yeah, we've seen wolf, we've seen ch- changes before. You know, it was um, always Universal. Always had that great history of you know, you know, you watch this stuff now. It's like this isn't scary. It's it's just it's the mood of it is yeah. is really what sold all the these tone. films. And the tone, the mood, yeah. the lighting, the right. the sets, you know, in the background. That's what made those that yeah, stuff. The, the shadow, cool. the shadows, the candles. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they got it right on this. It has that feeling, even though it's again, it's supposed to be taking place now. Um, we'll save the ending. D- d- suffice to say, Werewolf by Night gets he gets loose. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, and we'll, we'll leave that. But then at the very at the very very end, uh, you know, I'm not sure how to interpret it. Um, you know, in the end, Elsa gets the bloodstone, mm-hmm. and the one of the final shots is is she sitting sitting on a chair holding the bloodstone. And over the rainbow starts playing and everything slowly goes from black and white to color, you know, and she <laughs> yeah. actually is wearing a red leather, red leather jacket. So maybe the the red room thing, there might be something to that. Although if she was a black widow, she'd be wearing black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it goes to, it goes to, to color. And then we, we, we pick up on a shot outside of like a, of like a little lean to made out of like sticks and, and kind of, you know, limbs and stuff like that. And, <laughs> Yeah, I just loved it. it. It was so, you know, like it was just so. It, it was the perfect. There's no end, there's no end credit scene, so you don't have to stay for anything. Yeah, but the way they the the ending of it was perfect, <laughs> with with the French press coffee, the sol- <laughs> plain solitaire. You know, there's, there's like out. A, yeah, it's like there's like a wrecked like payphone <laughs> in the background. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're they're arguing over over who who saves who all the time. Yeah, you know, and and man, I guess Man Thing says he's hungry, and 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 you know, Jack is like, no, nah, I I can't think of food right now. <laughs> and then he says something. I was like, oh, you know, sushi. Okay, you know, like you want to do sushi? Okay, like it it it, it brought that whole rela- like you didn't really see the relate like they encapsulated the relationship in literally a minute and twenty seconds, if that. Mm-hmm. Like they, you know, he he comes out because because I don't know if you, like when when Man Thing makes his reappearance at the end when he leaves. He picks up a, a a cloak off the ground. You have to watch it to to catch it when he's when he's walking over the bodies. He picks up a cloak. That's the red and black cloak that Jack is wearing at the, when he when he wakes up. Okay, yeah. Okay. Out of the tent. Yeah. Like you know, so he got that because he knew that Jack was when he changed back was not going to be have any clothing. So they they have this relationship. They take care of each other, you know. Yeah. And it's and 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 he's making co- his coffee made for him. He's got like the little like wow, one that's, finger one finger yeah. fit in the mug. Um, it's so like, you know, it, it really, it really made me smile. Like th- this, this one off giant sized issue as it were for, mm-hmm. for Halloween. It's, it's fun. Again, it's Disney plus. So they, they don't go overboard. It's not R. I think they said they, by making it black and white, they were able to get away with a lot more. It, um, because it, it is by the, I mean that that being said, it is probably the bloodiest thing yeah. in the MCU thus far. I think they said one of the most violent yeah. deaths happens in this right. when, when the female yeah. uh, when the woman uh monster hunter gets it. Mm-hmm. Um she gets it probably I yeah, we've never seen anything like this that wasn't a lot of other deaths in the MCU are, are cartoony. You know, they blow yeah. up or they do, you know, they whatever. Right. <laughs> um yeah, this one, you know a lot of the violence is implied by blood splattering on the, on the, on the lens as well. So there's a lot of great, great techniques they use to get the point across, but Mm -hmm. it's a fun, it's a fun, you don't have to know anything about werewolf by night. You don't have to know anything about the character. You can watch this as a one-off. Yeah. Right. Yep. Absolutely. It's, it's absolutely something to, what what would you give, what would you give this as a score? We haven't done a score in a while Uh, from a, from a, uh, for, you know, A, B, C, et cetera, et cetera. I give it an A. I would definitely uh, give it an A. I think yeah, so too. I, I, I think it's you know, uh, for I got, what I got it, mad because we, we use we 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 use this term a lot lately, especially lately. It's like I like it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Does that imply that it's not that great? You know, but we're just dealing with it. You know, but I don't know. I think for in this case, I think I, it definitely is. Uh, I do like it for what it is, and it, it really um, uh, it really drives the nostalgic thing home. I, I have to admit in full disclosure, yeah. I went and watched after watching this, I did watch the wolf man. I went, you know, that's the effect that these kinds of things have yeah. on me, but that's a good thing. Yeah. It actually revisit some of the stuff that it's, insp- you know, that's inspiring it. 
but it but it does its own thing too. It's like you say, it has a little all these different elements: the comedic element, the buddy cop thing going on, the, the sort of the you know the watching out for each other. It's it's sweet. It, it had a yeah. really sweet ending. It did. But that's the still- and I love her. I Laura Donnelly. I have to shout out to her. She's I love that actress. Um, and that that closing shot was great with just her sitting there. She got what she wanted. Yeah. It's like I'm I'm looking forward. Hopefully we'll get to see her yeah. again at some point. You 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 you, you, know? you used you used the perfect word. The ending was sweet. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. Like that is that's the perfect word for it. It wasn't it just sweet. It was sweet. It was sweet. It was <laughs> yeah. just so so <laughs> yeah. nice. Right. Um and and nostalgic. Like like yeah, it mm-hmm. was just it was done like it was done perfectly. The the the, yeah. the the touch was was the right. It was not heavy handed. Didn't get it. Never it never got out of control. It never kind of folded in on itself. The story. It got too heavy or implausible. Yeah. Fifty five minutes was was the perfect time. You know, I think so. I think, yeah. I I think this is a viable thing for for some of these one off tales. You know, maybe you revisit uh, Werewolf by Night next Halloween with another tale. Uh, an yeah. hour long thing, you know, like he doesn't have to, although, sure. although as, as early as 2001, there was, they were developing a werewolf by night kind of film. Um, mm. But not everybody needs a film. I think these, this character was, no. was perfect. It would ho- it'd be kind of neat if, if they are going, if they are starting to do something with the sort of monster verse side of Marvel, it'd be kind of neat to do maybe, maybe do different stories, not necessarily werewolf by night, but I'd, do we need to, do we need another blade movie for example yeah. i mean that's and that they shut production down on that for some reason right now because oh, the director walked away so uh, uh, but do we need um, another blade film maybe we, mm-hmm. they could bring that do something like this with with blade the next time out or, or say, maybe we, we'll see blade you know we, we we may see werewolf by night in the blade film now that's right you know, because that's they're right. going to bring him in yeah. so that would make it more interesting you know yeah. that would be a reason to bring blade into this or man thing yeah. you know bring man thing into 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 that you know into the universe that way as well. So sure. Yeah. Maybe ghost rider. That's how you introduce the, the yep. next iteration of ghost rider, you know, have his own little short story like, yeah. like that. And then eventually maybe, yeah, maybe me, maybe team some of these characters up, bring yeah. moon Knight into I'm this. I'm all for and, it. I'm yeah, all for it. That'd be kind of, kind I, of cool. I love it. I yeah. love, I love the, yeah, I, I, I think we both love the aesthetic and I love what it, what it's trying to do. And it's a great, yeah. uh, not for, not for little kids. We'll, we'll leave, I think it's TV 14. So I, I think yeah. that's, probably the the proper assessment um definitely check it out if you've got disney plus uh it kind of snuck in it came out on october 2nd it wasn't a lot of fanfare i actually missed it i got it like a week later because i t- it totally kind of flew under the radar literally mm-hmm. um so definitely seek out werewolf by night if you're a classic if you're a movie fan you're gonna dig it if you like classic hollywood film you're, you're just gonna dig this film so well i think you're uh, gonna also dig it if you're a really diehard marvel fan too because yeah. they're really digging deep here with some yeah, of these characters they're, going, so, yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're mining the mining yep. the depths to get to get to yep. some of these characters and, and kind of give them some uh some 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 bring them out into the light as it were into yep. the moon into the moonlight as it were <laughs> so that's gonna do it for this 3324 podcast this is a quick hit we're, we're in and we're out on this one but by all means check this out it is on disney plus it is werewolf by night 55 minutes it's not even an hour out of your day we guarantee you're gonna have a fun a fun fun time with it so uh follow us on social media you can find us at 3324 podcast on instagram and facebook and this video will also be on youtube as well so you can kind of see us gush we haven't gushed in a while over something like this but it, we were yeah. overdue so the extra gushing came out so we're gonna say we're howling at the moon we are not issuing a silver bullet to this one we are we're gonna howl at the moon over over werewolf by night and for eric This has been Dean asking you to please be kind and rewind. You've been listening to the 3324 podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important. So make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 